how are you doing? I'm Martin from Gardens for Life. In this video, we're going to look at a bulbous leek, another perennial vegetable for your garden. It's actually called orphrey. It's a vegetable that's often traditionally used in the Benelux states, so Belgium especially, and it's really nice actually. Very similar to garlic, but it doesn't taste like garlic. It actually tastes more like halfway between onion and leek. So take a look at these here. These are the plants, so I, I've chopped the flower heads off them. Actually, here's one that I didn't chop on time. So those scapes could be eaten, same as the garlic ones. However, I won't be harvesting these now because there's only this is the last one left just to show you. If you want to grow our free in your own garden, take a look at our website. We have lots of different varieties of perennial vegetables and cuttings and plants as well. Thanks for your support. These could probably stay here for another while while they take some of the energy in from the leaves. However, I'm going to harvest half of my orphrey here now just because I'd like to get them dried up and sent off to you guys with your allium orders. So take a look at this. Let me try and pull that up. See if I can pull it up as it is. Sometimes it'll go. Okay. And don't worry if you're not getting all the soil off it to uh, dry it because um, this soil will be much easier to get off when it's dry. We'll try and take off as much as we can though without losing any of these bulbets. Look at this. This will be a fairly large one now and that's already starting to grow. So they do get quite to a nice size as well but you'll find that the average size is probably more like somewhere around that. And it depends on what kind of compost you're planting them into. And um, these, this will have lots of different, lots of little bulbets in it. And once it dries, it's easier to take them apart. So we're going to do that now. We're going to harvest them and then dry them. So orphrey is another handy vegetable to grow in your perennial gardens, especially because you don't have to harvest it. You can just leave it there and it'll clump and clump every year. Uh, same as any of the garlic varieties as well. So it's a handy perennial if you ever don't want to have to harvest it that year. Of course, if you want the most yield uh, per square meter or per square foot, you can harvest it every year and keep separating them and planting them out again at the right spacing. But when you let nature do the spacing, all that happens is they just clump and you can get a big harvest after two or three years. We don't have quite enough orphan yet to be able to do that. We're going to harvest all of the one-year-old plants now that were actually only planted about half a year ago, so around January. You can always plant them before the winter as well. Um, they will split automatically even without the frost. Same as the potato onion, which is actually over there. And let's harvest some of these now. So, And I'm going to put you on time lapse after the first few bulbs. most important thing is to try not to lose too many of these little turn like corms but if you lose them they'll just grow again and that's okay they, what I mean by lose is into the soil here because sometimes the soil can cover them but I don't mind if I do because I know they'll grow again hopefully even if they go if they end up quite deep Sometimes they don't come up easily because their root system is quite strong. Sorry worm. Sorry for all this disturbance. But it's amazing to think all I did here was actually I planted some of these and you get a whole big bulb out of it or like a bulb full of cloves I guess. We'll try and get most of the soil off we'll, and we'll dry them then in the greenhouse. I'm very happy with that harvest especially considering there's been no maintenance almost on this particular piece of ground here except for a tiny bit of weeding I had to do. So 
we pulled up a good few now and definitely one or two ended up getting stuck where the bulb must have had a good root and it was very difficult to pull up so it broke off the stem at the top so it'll be hard enough to get that out I think I should probably use a fork but I don't typically use tools here in the no dig garden at all oh except for gloves some people would say what kind of gardener wears gloves well I don't use a shovel or a rake so I'm a little different but I do work away some days I work away for hours and I don't want to be slowed down by a thorn or anything like that I realize that it's healthy to touch the soil for all the bacteria that you get on your skin however when doing most jobs I like to wear gloves because there's usually a nettle as soon as I don't bring me gloves <laughs> it's very difficult to get these up just by hand I think I should have probably used a fork when I don't bring my gloves walking down the garden usually I see a nettle that's just kind of smiling at me because it knows that I can't really pull it up easily but when I have gloves on I can pull up nettles and briars I appreciate they're very useful however we do have a lot of them we don't want an acre of briars or nettles or cream buttercup for that matter look at that one that's a nice one so look at that that only took me about five minutes to pull these up and um, we we'll probably end up with lots of them growing here even after harvesting them I'm gonna leave them in the ground and just leave this a little bit of a as a or free patch for next year and we'll see if it grows again same as the other tubers for example like the mashua or the Jerusalem artichoke usually you can't harvest them all it's very difficult and that's a good thing because then they grow again in the same spot without you having to replant them or for and or having to buy seeds for that matter that's the beautiful thing about these perennial vegetables you never have to buy them again as my stepmother always used to say sure what good is that if you sell your customers perennials they won't be back and I said Jesus they'll always be back for something else once they're happy with the thing they got most gardeners always find a spot for plants and of course we're all guilty of it buying plants before we even know where to put them in our gardens I'm sure it has happened to all of us you couldn't be going to a plant fair without buying a plant <sighs> that was quite intense pulling up all those plants it only took about five minutes or so maybe five or six minutes um, but uh, pulling them up can be quite difficult so if you are using no dig gardening it's a lot easier of course but this garden here is no dig but it's only got about 10 centimeters of compost these roots are probably rooted quite deeply and I have a feeling that this may not be all of the roots that only the ones that we can pull up actually so um, I think forking the area a little bit beforehand would be nice and look at this these plants here just to illustrate a point so you get this many bulblets which is a nice few so even if you want to start pickling them I'm gonna harvest half of them now and half of them probably in a month's time just to see what they look like when they're a bit more wilted I may get a bigger yield that way but I definitely want to get some of those harvested and dried out just for you guys that um, placed an allium pre-order and thank you guys for your support and I really appreciate that and I definitely want to give you uh, more than you expect back as always and we want to get you guys all growing perennial vegetables so you don't have to ever buy seeds again and you won't be stuck and hopefully you can share all these perennial vegetables with your friends your gardening friends and you'll have a great little backup then in case yours don't do well one year and you can get them again then from other people which is always handy and that's why we have a seed and plant swap uh, twice a year please do come to it it's on our events page if you want to take a look at the last few we made some videos about them so I just harvested all of these are free good few I think there was about 15 plants in that probably less than a square meter here yeah probably quite a bit less uh, maybe 
two thirds of a square meter, and we have a few more here, and another few here. These ones have been planted a bit earlier, a few weeks earlier, so we might actually harvest a few of these too, just to see how the yield is. But I can tell here, I tried to pull one up, just for the video, and uh, it actually broke the stem. It was that deeply rooted. Maybe I can get it now. No, look, it's just shedding. I need to get a fork at it, I'd say. Let me try this one here. Look what happens when they're, when they're rooted a little too deeply. But uh, nevertheless, that's a really good yield and we can clean those up after they dry. So this is our free. I'm gonna give one a try just to see. I know it's straight out of the ground. I should probably cure it first, but it's easy, really easy to peel. So you can just go like this. There you go, that's the peel. And that's the kind of like an onion inside it, but it's very mild actually. It's a kind of a leaky, leek flavored onion without the heat. It's a really nice flavor. Definitely a little bit bitter. That's the usual defense the alliums have, especially the garlic family and the leek family too. I need the bulbous ones. You're definitely better off to actually uh, cure them before eating them. So that bitterness goes away after a week or two. Let's try one of these here. These are the ones that were planted a little bit earlier, maybe two weeks earlier. I need to use two hands. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. It's peeling. Oh. There you go. <laughs> There's lots of little bulbets, and they are they're very easy to separate from the original plant once they're gone dry. And you can plant each of these so just to get a new plant. So each of these will produce a whole new plant, and it'll hopefully produce this much for you in one season. In particular, if you plant them before the winter. That would definitely help it produce a lot more. And these ones have not been planted before the winter uh, in this particular garden. So uh, these ones are only six months old and look, you still get a good yield. Let's bring these in. Let's bring these over to the greenhouse and that's where we're gonna dry them. The dogs always get excited when I move around. the driest place in County Ross Common, right here. I can guarantee you, because we haven't watered the center of the greenhouse much for the last couple of years. So I'm gonna put these on these trays here so they don't fall through, because uh, our tables here are made of pallets, and you can see they would probably actually fall through if I did try to put it on there. Um, and these will actually fall off once they go dry, so. We'll put them on these trays here, and that'll be fine. So all we're doing here is we're simply taking them and placing them in here like this and try and space them out a little bit. It's how easy it can be. And all these little ones, individual ones. Here we go. I'm gonna try and get rid of, well, you know, any kind of leaf material it's no longer connected to a tuber or a bulb. You want to get rid of that because that might go moldy. But the rest of it, I think that'll be fine. I think that'll that'll dry out nicely. And um, take a look over here. We've got some garlic here. If you haven't seen the elephant garlic video yet, I'll put a link in the description below. And there are a few other videos from the years previous where maybe there's things that I haven't mentioned yet. So this is actually four plants worth of garlic, uh, plus a little bit of a patch. So these two tables here are four three-year-old plants of elephant garlic, and they still grew quite big, uh, most of them anyway, and very happy with that. So well, this is not an elephant garlic video. This video is about the humble orphrey from the Benelux states. By the way, leave the greens on until they wilt away completely, until you can separate the little bulblets with ease. Well, thank you for watching the video, and if you'd like to support us, you can get some uh, garlic starts or perennial vegetable starts from our website. Or you can become a member of the Gardens for Life support community, which gives you a big discount on everything we do, and uh, access to uh, all kinds of exclusive material, like our ebooks and our no-dig 
gardening online course as well, which is available on the website. Thanks a million and we'll see you the next time. Bye bye. It can be harvested once a year or you can leave it in the ground. This is the plant here. So you can see it's kind of like a leek and the bulbs underneath. Hang on, let me just harvest it. That's not gonna work. All right, let me try that again.